I'm Doug Richardson, and this is Photography the Way I See It. Welcome back, fellow YouTubers, to another episode of Photography the Way I See It. I'm Doug Richardson, and today we're going to talk a little bit about some basic lighting control. Uh, I think I got four ways I'm going to talk about, maybe five, and uh, this will at least get you started if you want to get more into some lighting and being a little bit creative with some of your pictures. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a scrim. Okay, a scrim is something that light passes through and it's diffused. Um, if you've ever seen where they're making a movie and over top of the actors you see this giant square thing. Now you won't see it in the movie but if you see them making the movie if you see documentaries or something you'll see these. It's when the sun comes down it goes through this and the, and the scrim acts as a soft box and it flattens the light a little bit and it, what softens it a lot and allows it to come down onto the actors and they don't have these real harsh shadows on their face okay anything that does that is called a scrim all right now I have this umbrella here I'm going to show you this is not a photography umbrella it's a rain umbrella but the way it's made it can be used as a photography umbrella this is a very thin you can actually see through it it's so thin it's a material that photographers use sometimes to shoot through instead of a soft box and instead of bouncing out of an umbrella they'll actually put this between the light and their subject and they will shoot through it to get the soft box effect okay now I put together a little video demonstration and I'm going to insert that video right here and then when you come back and then we'll just uh, see where we go from there so enjoy the demonstration okay for this demonstration I have this little item here Looks like a salt and pepper, some kind of a strainer. Um, I have the lights are almost out in the room. I have them on just long enough to, uh, or bright enough so that the camera can see what it's doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flashlight. I'm going to shine it at that, and you're going to see how hard the shadow is. Then I'm going to take this white umbrella. It's a regular rain umbrella, but it's as good as any shoot-through photography umbrella. It's going to serve the same purpose. I'm going to be using this as a scrim. And what it, the scrim is, and I'll, I'm probably going to explain that to you in the main part of the video, but a scrim is when you see them making uh, TV movies and stuff, uh, you'll see the light passing through these big giant squares. It diffuses the sun so that they don't get these real hard shadows. But I'm gonna, I'll probably explain that more. Uh, but let me show you the demo of here of what's going on. Okay, as you can see, I got the flashlights shined at this item and you can see how harsh the shadow is. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass this umbrella between the light and the subject. The shadow is not gonna disappear but watch how much softer it gets when I bring this umbrella around here. Look at that. Look how hard that shadow is right there. Okay. And then when I bring the umbrella around, look how soft it is. And then it all also depends on how close and how far I have the umbrella from the light. If you're looking, I have the umbrella about a foot away from the light. Now I'm getting a corner of it in the camera there. But it's about a foot away from the light. The closer to the light I bring the umbrella, the harder the shadow gets. So now I'm moving the umbrella away from the light, but it is still, uh, it is still between the light and the subject. Look how much softer that shadow gets. Watch now to get harder now that I'm bringing the umbrella back towards the light. That is the soft box effects. That that's how soft boxes work. There's a light inside the soft box. Okay, and the front of the soft box is serving as a scrim to soften that light, turning it into a soft box. Now I'm going to remove the umbrella altogether, and there's the hard shadow again. That's what we talk about hard light and soft light. 
So that's your demo on how a scrim works, what it does, and how it affects the light. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. And this is the umbrella that was used, as I showed you before. You can see that there's all kinds of light coming through that now. I have a camera, obviously, on a tripod. I don't have a camera operator, so I don't know. I'm hoping that everything's staying in frame here. So, but, but this is the umbrella. This is how that works. Photographers that use this type of umbrella, uh, this won't, handle won't be here, and this stem will go through a holder. But the subject would be like on the other side of this umbrella. The light would be back here hitting the umbrella, going through it. When it comes out the other side, it's going to give that, that very soft light effect. Okay, I'm going to talk again about umbrellas here in a little bit and explain the advantages and disadvantages to you on that. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is a gobo. And this is a basic light blocking gobo. There's different, different uh, uses for gobos. To give you an example, uh, if a person is looking out a window and there's a Venetian blind there and the Venetian blind leaves stripes on their face, there are some gobos that are designed to project images by blocking part of the light so that the rest of the light shapes something. Okay, I've never used a gobo that way. The gobo that I use is a 100% it's black, it, it, it blocks total, all the light that I want blocked, it blocks. I've never let light pass through a gobo because I never, that wasn't my style of photography. But there's a lot of good stuff out there by using it that way. Um, but what that does, I went to the hardware store and I bought some PVC as everybody seems to do when they want to build something. And I made myself a frame that was about six feet tall. And then I went to the fabric store and bought a piece of felt, black felt, about six feet tall and maybe three feet wide, two and a half feet wide, and I clamped it to the top of the frame and let it drape all the way to the floor. And whenever I had one of my main lights that I did not want that stray light to go onto the background, I would set that gobo there and use it like a giant barn door. If you've seen the barn doors on the edge of the lights, I'm using a set of them, two sets of them right now. I'm not getting all of that main light. There's a barn door keeping light from spilling back there. Okay, that's what a gobo is. A gobo could be a person. I've, I've actually done that before. I've been in the studio photographing a senior and, and, and the senior's mother would be there and I'd say, hey, would you stand right here just for a second? And they're, they're like, well, what do you want me to do? I said, no, nothing, just stand there. And by where they were standing, one of my lights might have been throwing light, excess light in that direction, but because the mother was standing there or the father or whoever it happened to be, it was keeping light from going where I didn't want it to be. So I actually utilized that person as a gobo. So that's what a gobo does. A gobo is something, another, re, another thing for a gobo is if you have a light in the background somehow that's coming back towards the camera. Actually, this is a really good example. The kicker light that I have over here lighting up this side of my face, it would be hitting the lens on this camera, possibly putting light streaks or hazing the lens because the light is uh, directly hitting the camera. I have a column here in my basement that has one of my steel beams inside that holds up the house. I'm using the column as a gobo, keeping that light that's hitting me on this side of the face, I'm keeping it from shooting back into the camera lens. So here I am, I'm using this column as a gobo. So that's what a gobo is, all right? Now we're getting into reflectors. Now you've seen reflectors, photographers have an assist, assistant or they're in the studio with a whole, uh, reflector stand holding it. What the reflector does, and I have one over here, the reflector, and we're gonna assume that this kicker light ain't here because it's not gonna be once I put this up. This is the reflector. A lot of them you can get. They'll have silver on one side and white on the other. This is kind of a dull silver and a bright silver. You can get some that have gold on one side and silver on the other, gold and white, whatever your combinations be, the gold will throw a little bit warmer light uh, back at you. But what these are for is if I didn't have another light over here to help with the shadow on my face, this reflector and I don't know if you can see this because of my kicker lights there anyways, but I would have a shadow over here. Right now the kicker light's not working. This is all coming from the, the reflector. 
And the silver side, you only want to use, if you're outside and you use the silver side, you don't want to be too close to your subject because it throws an awful lot of light. I'm talking 50, 70, 80 feet away, you can throw light with these things if you're using direct sunlight. If it's an overcast day and you want to take a little bit of the, the skylight, the clouds, you want that little bit of light to kick back up in, maybe highlight under here a little bit so the shadows aren't so harsh, you can then use the silver side. But you don't want to use a silver side real close to your subject in the sun because they'll be going like this anyways, so you won't get a very good shot. Some of these have a white side. The white is very good to get close with because the white doesn't reflect a lot of light, but it gives enough that, that it's going to do the job. So basically, that's what a reflector does, okay? Let's see if that stays there. Okay. All right, the next thing... We'll get back to the umbrellas. There's two types of umbrellas, basically. One of them I'm gonna put up here somewhere so you can see it. I just showed you an example of the umbrella that you shoot through. That gives you the softbox effect, okay? The other umbrella is what I have on the screen right now. It's a bounce umbrella, which means if you were my subject and I had the umbrella here and the light here, the light would go into the umbrella bounce off of that silver and then be thrown right back over at the subject. The reason for the black backing on that particular umbrella, they all don't have black backings, but it keeps excess light from bouncing around the room, which is one of the disadvantages of using an umbrella. If you want total light control, if you use a softbox, the soft box is black all the way around. The back, the sides, everything is black, and the light goes one direction that way, okay? Now, you will have some spillage off to the sides, which you can control with a gobo, or you can buy what they call a honeycomb. It's a strip that goes on the front, looks like a honeycomb, a bunch of squares in it. It extends the soft box out a little bit and helps reduce a little of the, the excess light that you don't want going out. Because there are times where you want the light to go where you want it to go, not where it ends up after it bounces off of every wall and ceiling in the room and ends up hitting things that, that you don't want it to hit. Okay, but that's the difference in the two umbrellas is the diffusion umbrella, which you're shooting through towards this subject, the bounce umbrella, the light's hitting the umbrella and bouncing back at the subject. The shoot through is going to be a little softer, but you'll still get a good result. Uh, when, when would you use an umbrella? If you're out somewhere where you just want some lights, maybe you're doing indoor, maybe it's a rainy day and you're doing little league pictures or something and you want to take pictures of the kids, you just want light going everywhere. It's, it's not, you're not after a lighting pattern or anything like that. You're just wanting to flood the area with light, nice soft light. Maybe you're doing a high school dance and they're standing three feet, four feet from a background. You want all that light. You don't care where it goes. That's when you would use an umbrella. So... I think that's all I have today. I went through the disadvantages. Basically, is the stray light of the umbrella. We talked about scrims, gobos, reflectors. If you have any questions, feel free to put something in the comments. Okay? And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see my future episodes. Normally, at the end of my episodes, I tell you what's coming up next. I've already produced I don't know how many of these because I had them all written down and I knew in order how I was going to do them. Well, I've reached that, the end of that list. So I can't tell you what's coming up next. I do know in the future I want to get into uh, some sensor cleanings, uh, stuff like that, basic stuff, and uh, possibly some little tricks photographers use. Come on here and give you like a tip of the week or something like that. So uh, thanks for coming back again. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Photography the Way I See It.